Hello and welcome to Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona. Tonight, we bring you Game 2 of the 2023 World Series. This best of three showdown between the Texas Rangers and the Arizona Diamondbacks is on the verge of coming to a close. Tonight, the Diamondbacks will look for a sweep of the series to take the Commissioner's Trophy for the second time in their history and for the first time since 2001. On Thursday night, they won Game 1 in a very defensive matchup that went into extra innings. A sacrifice hit with the bases loaded came from Alec Thomas and secured the victory for the National League champions. The Rangers will look to retaliate this evening. The American League champions are on the verge of elimination. They keep Jacob deGrom in as starting pitcher. Tonight we find out if they will, if they will be able to get out of the hole or if Arizona will take home the trophy. The game is about to begin, so let's go down to the field. The Diamondbacks keep Zach Gallen on the mound here tonight. They will keep their pitching strategy going, the same strategy that they had in Game 1. It's going to be Marcus Simeon leading things off for the Texas Rangers. It is sold out, as it should be. Here at Chase Field, Game 2 of the World Series underway. First pitch goes inside. And we want to thank you for joining us as we could witness history here tonight. As I mentioned just moments ago, Arizona looking for their second World Series title, their first since 2001. That would make them two for two in World Series appearances. 2001, they became, they became the fastest, fastest expansion team, excuse my uh, poor diction, to win a World Series. They began play in 1998. First out is taken as we take a look at the starting lineup for Texas. Corey Seager coming up next, followed by the first baseman, Nathaniel Lowe. Center fielder Adolis Garcia will be in fourth position. Texas with 198 home runs in 2022, fourth in the American League. Seager at the plate. First pitch from Gallon here, 84 miles per hour goes outside and the 1-0 pitch nope. once again outside to the dismay of the home fans here majority diving back crowd but there are a few Texas fans in the stands as well count is 3-0 here for Seeger, Nathaniel Lowe is on deck. This will be fouled away, 82 miles per hour, the exit velocity as Seeger connects. The 3-1, fouled off once again. That'll make it a full count for Corey Seeger. 3-2 pitch coming from Gallon. Oh, what a crack of the bat. He'll send it deep into center field. Catch is going to be made at the warning track. And a big ovation coming from the crowd as the Diamondbacks take out number two. Nathaniel Lowe up next, the first baseman here for Texas. Massive, massive roar from the crowd. The 1 0 to Lowe. Goes foul. And the 1-1. One, one. Swung on and missed. Strike two. And setting up for the 1-2 pitch. Gallon looking to put him away. Swung on and missed. Strike three. We go to the bottom of the first. Scoreless between Texas and Arizona. So as I mentioned at the start of the broadcast, it's Jacob deGrom staying on the mound as the starter for Texas. They lost in game one, but you can't really place the blame on deGrom for that. He held his own. The defense held their own for the regular innings. deGrom went the distance, and then they took him out in extras, replaced him with Dane Dunning, 
And then, did the defense start to get sloppy? I think I said something to, on Thursday night to the effect of, if I were Dane Dunning, I'd be concerned for my job. And uh, if Rangers fans are desperate for a trophy, perhaps my life. Call back to Steve Bartman, obviously not a player, but when you mess up in a big situation like this, there are going to be neg negative consequences, and those may extend beyond your job into, pers into your personal life as well. Which isn't a good thing, but it happens. And it has happened. This is going to be ball four to bring up the MVP of the National League Championship Series. But before he faced the first pitch, attempted pickoff at first, runner stays. Unorthodox stance adopted by DeGrom on that pitch. It's ball one. Cattell Marty, as I believe I mentioned, the MVP of the NLCS. Once again, DeGrom with that unorthodox stance and the communication from the coaching staff either telling him to do that or telling him to stop doing it. I'm not familiar with the signs of baseball, or rather the particular signs of the Texas Rangers. Once again, going for that pickoff. Of course, there's the promotion with Taco Bell. He who steals a base in the World Series shall win free tacos for the entirety of America. Once again, DeGrom tries for that pickoff. Really suspicious of what's going on on first base. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Marte. Marti. He'll finally deliver. And it's sent foul. One and two. Is he going to go for another pickoff? No. He'll stay the course. And once again, it goes a bit wild. Catcher immediately springing up, but no stealing attempt. I think it would have been, would have been foiled pretty quickly. Full count. Three and two. Jake McCarthy on deck. As the sun sets here in Arizona. A 3-2 pitch in the strike zone. He's gone. First strike out of the night here for DeGrom. After he walked the leadoff batter, we see the replay here. And a, a good look at the spin he put on the ball. Just an interesting detail I thought I'd point out. McCarthy at the plate now. One on, one out here in the bottom of the first. That one just touching the frame of the strike zone but still in strike one DeGrom seems to have grown a bit less suspicious of first base no pickoffs attempted nope, in this at bat so far as that pitch goes high and there you see Corbin Carroll at first you've got to pick your moment if you want to steal there's always somebody watching, whether it be the first baseman, the other fielders, the pitcher, the catcher. There are a lot of eyes. Count is one and two for McCarthy. He'll connect here, send it into right field. Catch is going to be made for out number two. Thrown in the direction of second base. But Corbin Carroll will stay where he is. Christian Walker now at the plate for Arizona. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. And of course, you can't really expect them to score in the first inning, but it also makes you wonder whether or not we're going to see what we saw on Thursday night, extra innings. Of course, Alec Thomas hailed as a hero here in Phoenix after his aforementioned sacrifice hit with the bases loaded. It was a 1-0 win for Arizona, but a win is still a win. Three. That's strike three. 
We go to the top of the second, scoreless in Game 2 of the World Series. Adolis Garcia. Next up for the Texas Rangers, leading off the top of the second, the cleanup hitter, who was ejected in game five of the ALCS after that fight, as well as Dusty Baker. Big dispute over whether or not a bean ball was intentional. And it's worth it worth it to mention that James Kingsley is your home plate umpire here tonight. Must be a very great honor to pre preside over a game of this magnitude, but also something that would be quite nerve-wracking. You've got passionate fans on both sides of the equation, and they're going to be watching you. We saw some shady calls near the end of game one, and it's a bit surprising that there wasn't more outrage after that. Some may even accuse MLB of match fixing in favor of the Diamondbacks, but as a commentator, I'm supposed to be impartial. This will go low. It'll be ball four for Garcia. And Bubba Thompson being brought in as a pinch runner. Same thing happened in game one. And now he's got the responsibility of filling Garcia's position as well. Josh Young, number six, in now for the Texas Rangers. None out, one on here in the top of the second. Home run at this stage would, of course, make it 2 nothing. Gallon adopts the same unorthodox stance we saw from DeGrom, and it goes low. He'll do it again. Really, when you do something like that, it's a bit of a gamble. You don't really have that much precision as you would with some other more normal, more usual pitching stance like we just saw there. But sometimes it can pay off. Other times, it is very risky. I am reminded of the sport of cricket. The resurrection of spin bowling thanks to the great Shane Warne. But uh, we're not in India. We're in Arizona. Strike three. Although we will continue to be in India, New Zealand versus South Africa coming up on Monday. For those that may be interested in the Cricket World Cup, this is going to be a steal. And Thompson, by the word of Taco Bell, has just won America free tacos. Thompson gets to second, and now he's out. He is out. For once, the pickoff attempt pays off. And not a minute later, after he steals, he is gone. And it's two out and none on for the Texas Rangers. You've got to be careful out there. You've just got to be careful. Count is one and one for Jonah Heim. He'll connect here, send it into foul territory. Win expectancy went up for Arizona after that pickoff. And now the 1 2 is going to go low to make it 2 and 2. So 60% to 40% now, the win expectancy. Of course, you can't make bets after a game has already begun. 3 2 full count pitch coming to Heim. Gallon will look to put him away. It'll go low. And Heim takes off running to first. And it looks like pitch change is in order for Arizona. 
Zach Gallen will depart. And his replacement will be... Your attention, please. Now, Dre Jameson. Number, Number 29, the second pitcher called in here for Arizona. You ask me, I don't think Gallon was doing that bad of a job. He may have sent some people to first, but or to the bases. But still, they make the change and it pays off. We go to the bottom of the second. Still scoreless. Your attention, please. This game defensively for the Rangers. Now playing center field. Number eight, Baba Thompson. So Baba Thompson joins the rest of the defense. As Jacob DeGrom takes the mound again, Josh Rojas leading off here in the bottom of the second. Still scoreless between Texas and Arizona. In my opinion, this sort of exemplifies what we saw on Thursday Night Baseball. Oh! This is going to go deep into right field. Ground rule double. That's a start to an inning. We see the replay. It skips off the wall, the top of the wall, and it goes into the crowd, and now there's going to be a pitching change. Jacob DeGrom taken off the mound. He went the distance in game one. He will not do so here in game two. His replacement will be... Ladies and gentlemen, Dane Dunning. Now, now this... With all due respect to Mr. Dunning, this is a gamble. It was Dane Dunning who effectively cost Texas game one. And now the same could happen here. First pitch to Lord Guriel Jr. will be in the strike zone. Five home runs in 2022 for Guriel Jr. and the 0-1. In the strike zone to make it 0-2. Cole Reagans in the bullpen for Texas, the left-hander. Ready to be brought in if necessary. The 0-2 coming to Guriel Jr. Low. The 1-2. Fouled off. Guriel able to stay alive. Count is 1 2 once more. That goes low. 79 mile per hour slider from Dunning. And the 2 2. Cut it! It's out of here! It is out of here! Diamondbacks take the lead. Two-run home run from Lords Guriel Jr. And that may be all. That may have just won Arizona a World Series. Crosses the plate. It's 2-0 Arizona. And now the Rangers are in a heap of trouble. Indeed, they can do it. It's 2-0. And Guriel Jr. will be hailed as a hero in these parts. As long as the Rangers, or as long as the Diamondbacks, can get three more outs. 390 feet, 99.5 miles per hour. Google StatCast providing the details. So the win expectancy is now shot up to 94% for Arizona compared to 6% for Texas. And now some PTSD, so to speak, for Dane Dunning. First in that he may have cost Texas the game once again. Second in the fact 
that he faces Alec Thomas once again. And Alec Thomas was the man who won Arizona game one on Thursday night with that sacrifice hit with the bases loaded and extras. Dunning may have just lost his job. And I don't think... I'm not going to assume the fans are as psychotic as to go after him. But stranger things have happened in sports. Can get very interesting at times. That was most definitely a ball. Umpire calls it a strike and the fans are in dispute. You can see it again. Only a small, small sliver of it was touching the frame of the strike zone. But we have one advantage over the home plate umpire. The umpire doesn't have the rectangular box, the frame, that signifies the strike zone. He's making calls based on the judgment of the naked eye. So perhaps the rigging allegations are not true. This will be thrown to first. Nick Ahmed is out. And that's going to bring up Gabriel Moreno. He could very soon be a World Series champion. It all falls upon the shoulders of the Diamondback defense. Moreno will send this into right field. Going to be a single. It'll fall upon the shoulders of the Diamondback defense and the Rangers offense. Three runs to win, two runs to at least tie and bring this to extras. And in extras, you get a runner on second when you start. There we see the Bobcat mascot of the Diamondbacks on the dugout. I don't quite know his name, but I do recognize him. Two out, one on here in the bottom of the second. Corbin Carroll, lead off in the batting order, now at the plate. Walked in the first inning. The 1 0 to Carroll. Sent away into foul territory. Strike one. The 1 1 pitch goes low. 2 and 1. And the 2-1 coming now. Nope. Outside. Cattell, Marte on deck for Arizona. The MVP of the NLCS. But he may not get a chance to come to the plate. Spinning through, this will be thrown to first. And we go to the top of the third. Arizona 2, Texas 0 in Game 2 of the World Series. Diamondbacks on the verge of the championship. So we see the same closer that we saw in game one. Kevin Ginkle given the duty to wrap things up. To wrap up the entire MLB season and to wrap up a championship victory for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Again, the first time since 2001. It's in less epic fashion, of course. Everyone remembers the game-winning single off Mariano Rivera in Game 7. But a win is a win. A World Series trophy is a World Series trophy. And in just three outs, the Diamondbacks could once again be on top of the baseball world. And if they are, then in our post-game show, we will make announcements regarding the future of MLB on the network. More specifically, what we're going to do next season. This goes high, 3-1. and one. Josh H. Smith on deck for Texas. And as Miller stares down the 3-1 pitch, he sends it away into foul territory to make a full count. So 
three, two, low. And that'll put a runner on base for Texas. To bring up Josh H. Smith. First pitch. He connects into right field. Catch is made. And Smith gone from one pitch. One down, two to go for Arizona. Marcus Simeon at the plate. But something that the Diamondbacks have to keep in mind, and the Rangers also have to keep in mind, if Simeon or anyone that comes after him hits a home run, it'll be tied, and we will most likely go to extras unless Arizona pull off another walk-off. The likelihood of this happening is very slim, but our motto here on the network is that anything can happen. 1-0 pitch to Simeon will be in the top corner of the strike zone to make the count 1-1. One 1-1 and one. One, one pitch inside. 1-2. and two. And the 1-2 pitch fouled off. The suspense is building. Can you feel that in the air? Perhaps you can feel a shock of adrenaline, especially if you're a fan of either of these two teams. In the sport of baseball, there is nothing more suspenseful than a situation such as this. Swung on and missed, strike three. And the Rangers down to their last hope. The Diamondbacks down to their last obstacle. Who's it going to be? That is the question. Will it be Texas? Will it be Arizona? You can see the excitement in the stands. Some of the Diamondbacks fans getting a bit fired up. I saw one guy jumping around. Count is 0-1 for Seager. The 0-1 pitch goes inside. Seager 0 for 1 here tonight. 1-1 one, one pitch coming now. Checks a swing. It's called a strike. It is called a strike. And Texas down to their last strike. The 1-2 pitch. For the first time since 2001, the Arizona Diamondbacks have won the World Series. We'll go to the post-game show right after this. Diamondbacks, world champions. For the first time since 2001, the Arizona Diamondbacks are world champions. A 22-year wait has finally come to an end as Arizona goes 2-for-2 two two in World Series appearances. It's still quite early here in Phoenix, which means the celebrations are going to take up a large part of the night. The streets will be filled with rowdy Diamondback supporters celebrating this historic moment. With the 2023 season wrapped up, it's time to talk about the future. What is next for Major League Baseball on the Beagle Sports Network? Well, our, our coverage will not begin right at the start of the season. In fact, we won't start until July when the All-Star Game takes place in Arlington, Texas. Thursday Night Baseball will return on July 18th and will cover the rest of the season, finishing out with the three-game World Series at the end of October. We want to thank you for tuning in throughout this season, and as we offer a final congratulation to the Arizona Diamondbacks, we hope you'll come back for more baseball next year. For Major League Baseball, and for all of us here at the Beagle Sports Network, we will say goodbye and good night from Phoenix, Arizona. Once again, the Arizona Diamondbacks have won the World Series. <laughs>